Hi, my name is Rachel Hall, and I will be talking about art and feminism, passive progress. So let's start off with the basics. Feminism is a complex set of ideologies and theories that seeks to achieve equal social, political, and economic rights for women and men. Hartney says that feminism's success as a cultural force can be measured in the ways that artists, men and women, have embraced, challenged, and renegotiated its assumptions. I think that art has been the major player in um, feminism and achieving the goals that we want because of how it engages the audience and how it challenges people to think about things that they normally wouldn't. So I was interested in looking at um, feminism and its relationship to art. Let me do full screen here. Sorry, my bad. Um, Okay. In the past decade, the women's liberation movement has explored issues touching on virtually all areas of human experience. Why then do we hear so little about art? Why has art, perhaps more than any other field, lagged so far behind the general movement for change initiated by modern feminism? This question was asked in 1974. If we could think about it, it's a question that still should be asked today. Um, there have been a lot of changes that have happened in terms of art and feminism and exposure for women and people of color, but even from 1974 to now, there hasn't been the progress that we have really been looking for. Um, so let's talk about the difference between saying art and feminism versus feminist art. When you say feminist art, it kind of overarches everything and lumps everything under the umbrella of feminism rather than thinking about the other um, components that might go into an art piece besides the feminist side. So saying feminism and art is considered to be a better way to say it. Um, we have a tendency to generalize and minimize women's experiences when we say, when we kind of lump all the women together under an umbrella, which is why it's not good to do that. Um, so one of the artist groups that I decided to look at was the Gorilla Girls, which kind of launched, um, I believe, the second wave of feminism somewhere in the middle of there. So what they did, they're an anonymous group that wear um, gorilla masks when they go out in public and speak. And they're basically a group that started by protesting the fact that there weren't a lot of female artists in art museums in New York, but they've kind of launched off and they talk about a lot more than that. So they started by posting, um, putting posters all over New York talking about artists such as this one. Um, and they're not afraid to point people out, which I like about them. They're very to the point. They use a lot of, um, a lot of sarcasm, they do a lot of puns. Recently they'll incorporate memes and things like that, which I think is really cool how they stay with the times. And they started off probably as just like a small little group of women that were upset, but they've grown into such a big organization. So with that, um, one of the authors in Feminism and Contemporary Art, The Revolutionary Power of Women's Laughter, which is a book that I looked into looking for um, information about feminism, talks about the power of laughter. Um, so this artist says, not artist, sorry, author, says that the smile is more than a smile, it is laugh. And what that laugh expresses is something quintessentially female, both seductive and threatening. The lady smiled in regal calm, her instincts of conquest, of ferocity, all the heredity of the species, the will to seduce and ensnare, the charm of deceit, the kindness that conceals a cruel purpose, all this appeared and disappeared by turns behind the laughing veil and buried itself in the poem of her smile. Good and wicked, cruel and compassionate, graceful and feline, she laughed. I think it's interesting because um, in terms of laughter, that's something that I think males like to idealize and women like they want women to be happy, like they'll say, why don't you smile more, things like that. But women can use laughter as almost like a tool or a weapon against 
men and against um, oppression. Um, for example, when you laugh at the face of adversity, you're kind of challenging the norm and using your laughter to express your emotions. Um, I'm going to tie this into the artist um, Jenny Holzer, who is also a um, feminist that makes art. She also makes art for just universal truths about life. One of her pieces that I thought tied in really well is this piece that says, Laugh hard at the absurdly evil. Um, Holzer likes to use abandoned marquees and put up signs. She also does um, LED lights, like we, um, let me go back to the first image. So like this kind of tunnel of light she likes to use, incorporate technology and different ways to really display messages so people can see them. She'll do billboards, she's even done projections of lights onto buildings and things like that, like they do in casinos. Um, so when she says laugh hard at the absurdly evil, I couldn't find anything online that explained why she chose to put that or what her interpretation of that sign was. But um, to me, and to tie into Isaac, who was the author of um, the book I was just referencing earlier, to laugh, like I said earlier, is an expression of your emotion. It can show disbelief. It can show joy, depending on the way that you laugh. I think the way she says laugh hard at the absurdly evil is like um, laughing in the face of adversity, saying that you're not going to be complacent with this and you're going to challenge it. So in terms of feminism, this could mean multiple things in terms of the absurdly evil being inequality and human rights violations just to continue to challenge to continue to keep challenging the norm and pushing for um, equality and benefits for all people not just the privileged um, so to conclude I'm going to use a quote from Deepwell um, and he says that he or she I don't remember Anyway, feminism's agenda for social change has been about the transformation of what it means to be human. This means changing the lives of both men and women in our society by escaping all prescribed or stereotyped roles. Fem feminism here is not limited to the question of legal, social, and civil rights, important as these are. Instead, many of these texts recognize how practices in everyday life, in cultural representations, and in the representation of women as cultural producers can reinforce sexism. Um, so with feminism and art in general, a lot of feminist artists would push to, instead of just men painting women in regal positions or painting women naked, just to show women doing simple everyday things, like how he says, and how that can be liberating in and of itself, just women being women. Um, I think we've gone very far in terms of art and feminism. There are a lot more women artists that are recognized than there have been in the past. But I do think we have a long ways to go. And I think that by expressing ourselves through art and talking about these issues, we can continue the fight to equality. And there is my work cited. Thank you.